Bonjour. You know, 23 though, we're not focused on the men. We're not focused on the love. I'm not. I don't know about you, but I know I'm not. Como ça va? Lover girl. And then I'm like, leave me alone. Happy 2023. Okay. Hello, you guys. What is up? Welcome back. If you're new, it's very nice to meet you. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you guys had an amazing holiday season. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I love the New Year. I am so not a holiday girly, but I am a New Year, New Year woman. Okay. So yeah, I'm in a good mood. I hope you guys are in a good mood. Uh, today's pick a card, you guys, is going to be a pick a card. The brutally honest truth about the next three months in your love life, in your career. Uh, with your friends, with your living situation. Uh, I do keep the reading open. So it's not like we are focusing particularly on one subject or another. Um, but I do think that all those subjects can be applied to each reading. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> Without further ado, you guys, here's a clip of the piles right now. All right, you guys, these are the three piles, group one, group two, and group Number three, if you guys need a moment to meditate on which pile is calling your name, you guys are free to do that right now. And if you would like to pick more than one pile, you guys are always welcome to do so. You guys have now picked your pile. Please go ahead and check out my description box where I've left you guys timestamps for when your reading will start. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just jump into today's pick a card. Hi, group one. Welcome, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Are you excited? Um, let's Let's roll. <laughs> Gemini, hello. Gemini, sun, moon, rising. Hi, love ya. Libra and Leo, hello Libra, hello Leo. Aries and Virgo, hello Aries, hello Virgo. Sun, moon, rising, you guys. The dice just come, like we do the dice, you guys, because someone asked in the comments recently. We do the dice um, to signify either your zodiac sign, sun, moon, rising, or somebody who may be involved in today's reading, sun, moon, rising. Also, you guys, sometimes I do feel like the zodiac signs can just represent an energy that's connected to the reading or connected to the situation that's going on. For example, you guys, Gemini showed up twice for you just now. Gemini is connected to Mercury. Mercury is about to go in retrograde when this is being filmed filmed. Um, also, it's about communication, right? Mercury is all about communication and things like that. Show, learning, networking, things like that. Okay, so that is something that could be taking place in today's reading. Not saying it is, I'm just saying it could be. So the dice and everything else outside of the cards is just extra confirmation. It's just dessert. It's a side piece. It's not the main meal. I'm gonna go ahead, you guys, and shuffle your cards. Can I please get a brutally honest message on what group number one needs to hear about their next three months? All right. Can I... Okay. Can I please get a brutally honest message for group number one in regards... We have three major arcana cards here, you guys, and that signifies whenever that comes up in a reading, right? It's like, this is heavy or not heavy. I shouldn't say heavy because sometimes it could be great. Um, this is significant. It's a significant point in your life the next three months. Okay. Can I please get confirmation on this first card that popped up? Yeah. Can I get confirmation on this second card that popped up, please? Actually, the third. Sorry. Can I please get confirmation on the third card that popped up? Okay. Moving on to the oracle cards, you guys. Can I please get a brutally honest message? Can I please get a brutally honest message for group one in regards to their next three months? Can I please get a brutally honest message for group one in regards? There's a lot of change, you guys. Um, okay. I wasn't going to use this deck, but I want to now. Can I please get a... Yeah. All right. Final cards. 
Can I please get a brutally honest more? Can I please get any extra information? Okay. All right. Group one. Um, all right. <clears throat> Let's start. So the first card that came up for you guys, group number one, is the Eight of Swords. When this card comes up in a reading, I personally find this very lovely or encouraging in a way because this signifies being trapped, okay? As you guys can see here, this woman, she's bound up. She's tied up, she's blindfolded, her hands are bound, there's swords around her. The swords, the way I view the swords, right, is like danger, right? It's keeping us confined. It's something that we see as an obstacle, something that we see as prevention from us being able to be set free, something that is preventing us from moving on, right? So I don't know, you guys, I'm unsure what this, what that obstacle for you is signifying. It very well could be a dead-end career. It could be exhaustion in your day-to-day -day routine. It could be your relationship that you're unhappy with, or perhaps you're single and you've, you've been feeling stuck, or you've been feeling like, oh my gosh, things are not progressing forward. Like things are just, my life is not progressing. Um, it, I almost feel this frantic feeling of like, it's too late. Like it's too late for me to to go back to school it's too late for me to start over in a relationship it's too late for me to do this it's too late for me to do that and you guys need to know it's not too late whatsoever um i wanted obviously clarification for this card you guys the eight of swords feeling trapped feeling stuck feeling like we are bound by something that we have no control over the signifier for this card, you guys, is the Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords group one is signifying a dramatic ending. It's signifying betrayal and perhaps someone stabbing you in the back or something happening, coming to a close very suddenly. When you guys have this come up in a reading, I want you to see this as we are feeling trapped or stuck or in an unfavorable position because of an unexpected event that may have come to an end or an unexpected um, betrayal that has happened in our life. You guys can see this as a relationship suddenly ending and perhaps your hands feel tied because you guys live together and you're stuck in a lease. Perhaps your job or your boss is suddenly like, um, we are reducing hours or we're reducing this or reducing that. Uh, which is going to affect your pay and your hands feel tied because you're like, okay, now what do I do? Like, I don't feel like I have an option. Now, there's always choices to be made, guys, right? And I know when you're going through a difficult time, I know when you are going through the struggle, nobody wants to hear like, oh, like you can't, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it doesn't feel comforting to hear like things can get better. Or you have other options because other options are not necessarily easier options. They're just options that are outside of the options that you're making. Um, so I'm not trying to be insensitive or sounding as if I'm coming from a place of privilege in regards to your particular situation because I don't know your particular situation, you guys. But I do need to relay the message to you that whatever you're feeling bound up by, whatever you're feeling like stuck and trapped within, you need to know that there are choices outside of that. There is a way out, there is a path forward and it may not be an easy path forward. It may be really, really difficult. Um, but personally, I would say if we're unhappy, if we're feeling pain, if we're feeling hurt, if we're feeling like we aren't progressing or we aren't evolving, it's worth the struggle to try to get out of that situation, right? So that's that. Now we also have strength here, you guys. Strength, when it comes up in the reverse position, is talking about having erratic emotions, not feeling emotionally strong or emotionally stable. Whenever this comes up in reverse, it does make me feel, again, it makes sense with the Ten of Swords coming up in the Eight of Swords. So our emotions may just be at a heightened state where we're very easily hurt, things may easily agitate us. You may be agitated listening to me talking about this right now, which again, like I understand. Um, 
but it's it that's what it is it's a heightened sense of emotion it's emotional sensitivity it's perhaps forgetting that we are strong it's perhaps having a moment of weakness which is human you guys and it's completely okay um there's nothing wrong with having phases in your life where you are being a freaking human right like there's nothing wrong with having phases in your life where you're erratic or where you're uh highly emotional i don't even want to say the word erratic because it's like not everybody is going to use their emotions in that way but it's okay if you are feeling emotionally vulnerable or emotionally weak at the moment um i don't see this as something that needs to come to an end i do believe that our emotions are important i do believe that our emotions deserve the respect of being felt right we have judgment this is signifying a need to rise up group number one again to me this feels very comforting in the context of the cards that we just talked about it's time to rise up. It's time for you to make a decision. It's time for you to choose yourself, to choose your path, to choose your belief system and what is important to you. I feel like for a lot of us here, we can take a lot. Like you guys have a high threshold when it comes to pain or when it comes to people disappointing you or when it comes to perhaps not having everything that you want. Um, settling. I don't I hate saying that again this is a brutally honest reading you guys i feel like this group may be very comfortable with settling or maybe very comfortable in situations that are not the most favorable for you uh and this card the judgment card is letting me know it's time for you guys to rise above that it's time for you to stand up it's time for you to decide for yourself where do you draw the line how much are you willing to take how long are you willing to be unhappy how much time are you willing to waste, right? <sighs> okay. I did ask for confirmation on that, you guys. We have the two of pentacles. And the two of pentacles, when it comes up, right, it's talking about balance and need to strike a balance. You guys may feel like there's a lot on your plate right now. You guys may feel overwhelmed with how many things you have to get done, how many steps are in front of you. Uh, we're not going to get those steps done if we remain here, right? And again, getting out of the situation does not have to be the easiest, you guys. I don't want to paint it like this is an easy breezy moving forward type thing. But at the end of the day, is it worth it? I would say yes. Okay, so with this two of pentacles, I want you guys to keep in mind that there is a need to strike a balance. There's a need, I feel like, to make a plan as well and to take those steps take a step every day in the right direction of where you're wanting to go or how it is that you can rise above this situation okay and then we have to end whatever is holding us back you guys this could be yourself for some of you you could literally be your biggest enemy um for others of you this could be friends or family members who are toxic this could be again that career that you feel like it's holding you back or not giving you what it is that you need to feel financially free or to feel um, in, internally satisfied with your work environment and what I want you guys to take with that is just like if it's making you feel stuck if it's not helping you grow if you're not feeling happy in this situation anymore it's time to let it go it's time to move on it's time to wrap up that cycle and I know that's so hard group one and I know it's not it's not easy you know guys it's moving on and closing chapters is rough but i feel like getting on the other side of that once we can close up this chapter once we can move forward i feel like you guys are going to be happier i feel like you guys are going to feel more free um there are cards here moving on that give me that feeling of like group one is going to have so much freedom and so like you're going to be in a stage in your life where you just feel like i can do anything that i want like the sky is the limit there are no limitations on me anymore and for a lot of you i do feel like this these swords that are surrounding you this bondage that is around you obviously i feel like it's figurative but i feel like it's other people in your life or it's situations that you have become accustomed to or comfortable with but you know deep down it's not making you happy we have chiron here chiron chiron <laughs> it's healing you guys um chiron is the wounded healer it says healing powers growth um amends releases personal development inherited issues self-doubt generational trauma shame sensitivity we talked about some sensitivity with the um, strength in reverse forgiveness superpowers divinity cleansing softness and pain 
All right, group one. So with the Chiron coming up, there's a lot we have to heal in order to move forward. There's a lot we have to heal in order to rise up, you guys. And I really want to encourage you guys, group number one, to please look into shadow work. Please look into questions that you need to ask yourself in order to heal. Please look into how it is that you can heal yourself. How it is that you can get yourself out of this Eight of Swords situation? How you can free yourself? How can I live a more free life? I want you to ask yourself that right now, group one. Like, how can I live a more free life? What is making me feel like I'm not living my best life or I'm not living the life that I envision for myself or I'm not where I want to be. Why is that? Are you afraid of success? Are you afraid of change? Are you afraid of failure? What are, What is holding you back from this? And address that. Please address that, you guys. Are these patterns that you have recognized in your mother, in your father? I feel like oftentimes a lot of our fear isn't even necessarily our fear. It comes from other people in our life who we view as influential. I know for me, I have a lot of fear that my mother shares. Um, and I work really, really hard to work through that because I'm like, this isn't even my fear to hold on to. Like, I don't even know why I'm I'm afraid of this when it's not, it's not anything that has happened to me. It's not fear that is connected to me and my experience. It's fear that's connected to her and her experiences, right? So please, group one, I want you to take a look in the mirror and ask yourself where it is that you can focus your energy on that's going to help you grow. It's going to help you move forward. We have the sun and this is being, okay? And this says essence, energy, self-awareness, life force, spirit, creativity, honor, mask masculinity, um, distinction, childishness, ego, indiv individuality, solitude, expression, self-sufficiency, shine, heartbeat, and father. Okay, so whenever the sun comes up in a reading, you guys, um, astrologically speaking, this always gives me the energy of like, we need to focus on our foundation. We need to focus on what makes us us like what is giving us purpose what is giving us life right the sun when you think about the sun you guys like the sun does it gives life to the world right without the sun we wouldn't be here the plants the animals like nothing would be here without the sun so whenever this comes up in a reading i see this as like what is your purpose why are you here what is your son? What is keeping you going, group one? Okay. I see this as needing to address and fix our foundation, fix the cake. Okay. Fix the batter. Like we need to fix the main um, core of ourselves, or I shouldn't say fix, address, right? Address and really look at that. Also with this, you guys, it's talking about masculine energy and self-awareness. The, the shadow work coming up, shadow work is so connected to self-awareness and looking at yourself. And I feel like so many people in my life personally, um, and maybe you guys can relate to this group one, so many people who struggle with um, being happy or with living a life that they're proud of or living a life that they feel satisfied in, a lot of it does come from having trouble looking at themselves and addressing what it is they can fix within themselves. When you can take responsibility for your actions and your perspective and how it is that you look at the world and how it is that you move forward in the world, I feel like life opens up for you. And I feel like there's also this sense of freedom that comes with that because we're, we're no longer bound to my life is like this because of this person that I have no control over. No, when we can say my life is like this because I chose this. My life is like this because this is a this is the decision that I am making that's free, right? Because we have control over our decision making, we have control over our actions. With this mat or with this sun card, I want you guys to perhaps take a moment to embrace your masculine energy. All of us have masculine and feminine energy within us, you guys. I do personally feel like for those of us who identify as more feminine, our masculine energy comes out when we're working, our masculine energy comes out when we are, um, you know, trying to produce income, because that is a masculine traditionally a masculine role. So Perhaps there's some healing that needs to be done within our masculine energy, within our confidence, within our I'm choosing to do this and I feel confident in my choices and I'm going to move forward in what it is that I'm choosing to do. Um, action, feeling or healing our action oriented energy. Okay. We have the owl spirit. It says, I see clearly now. 
So there may be clarity coming in for you guys in regards to that pain or in regards to that feeling stuck. You guys may have a clear vision on how to move forward, on what it is you want to do, where you want to go, who you want to be. I feel like through writing, I find a lot of that very clear. Whenever I write things down or when I, whenever I journal, I do find that there's more clarity that I receive on myself. Sometimes just putting words to paper is really helpful. We have whale spirit and it says, trust the great mystery. I love that. Trust the great mystery. Some of you may feel like you want to stay in this stuck situation or in this situation that's not making you the happiest because it's familiar. And I feel like this is spirit saying, trust what is ahead. Even if you don't know, even if you feel scared, trust that the mystery is going to lead you where you're meant to be where you're meant to go, with what you're meant to do, with who you're meant to be with, right? I think some of the most amazing things in life, you guys, are things that we don't plan for, right? Allowing life to surprise us, allowing the universe to surprise us. <sighs> okay, we have freedom here, you guys. Escaping from that eight of swords releasing the cage that we have either put ourselves in or the cage that we feel we have been placed into deciding to step out of that right whenever this comes up you guys it always reminds me of that saying a golden cage is still a cage it doesn't matter how beautiful it is it doesn't matter if it's made of pure gold being stuck being trapped not having the freedom to move about the world the way that you feel is most most authentic to you or most productive for you and your happiness it's not we're never going to be happy in that we can never be happy if we are confined to boundaries that we that we feel stuck in right or boundaries that we feel like other people have put us in we have family here you guys okay so for some of you there's a few things with this oh there's a few things with this group number one number one <laughs> it could be that you guys feel like you have to release yourself from your family or free yourself from your family for some of you your family has very high expectations of you or very unrealistic expectations of like what they want for you in life and it could be really scary to step away from that but that may be something that you guys need to do in order to regain this freedom for others of you, this could be a situation where it's asking you to perhaps reach out to people who you feel like you can connect to on a serious, deep level to cut off the relationships that are not profound, to cut off the relationships that don't feel significant or that don't feel like they are going to be long lasting, creating family around us, or perhaps even reaching out to our family members to discuss what is going on or to help heal whatever it is that is hurting us currently or whatever it is that has held us back in the past. Of the divine masculine, again, group number one, I really feel like it's important for you guys to put yourself first to step into more of a masculine role. And when I say again, a masculine role, it's an action oriented role. And before anybody in the comment section goes, women can be action oriented too, I understand. But when we do group readings, we have to speak in general terms. Um, and when we speak generally, you guys, masculine energy is more action oriented. It's also um, very focused on like achieving an end goal, right? So becoming more focused putting action or putting sorry you guys there was a package delivery of meat um literally invoking our inner masculine you guys being action oriented taking charge taking action deciding that we are going to drive our own ship we're not going to be passive we're not going to be i'm going with the flow um we're taking charge right we're taking responsibility for where our life is and we're deciding to make a change or we're deciding to take responsibility for our lack of change okay oh my gosh i was like there was another card from this deck this is betrayal, you guys, and it says, trust this part of your journey, understanding that through this pain, this is teaching you and others to love more deeply and in a higher divine capacity. So you guys, I, again, I'm not in your life personally, right? Uh, we are strangers on the internet having a beautiful moment together, but I don't know what's going on with each and every one of you individually. 
You guys have been betrayed though on some level and this could even be a betrayal of self. I have countless moments in my life where I feel like I have betrayed myself or I have betrayed what was what's best for me um, because I wanted to make other people happy or because I felt like this is what is ex expected of me. And for those of you where you're relating to that, I want you to know that, like the card is saying, this is a learning lesson and there's no need to beat yourself up over it. There's no need to hold on to anger and resentment and fear of the future. Um, with this betrayal card, I think it's very, very important for you guys, group one, that you take this as a lesson and you take it in a constructive manner and not in a destructive manner, okay? let it build you don't let it break you we have marriage and we have the young man okay so for some of you you could be going through separation like a marriage separation obviously this is a decision that you guys could have made when you were really young now for those of you where you're like i'm not married Zenas. This is a situation where you guys are trying to break a contract. And the reason why I'm seeing this as a negative, you guys, is based on the other cards that are here. So, and there's something positive I'll add at the end, but with this, you're either ending a relationship or you're ending some type of contract that you made in a state where you feel like you didn't have all the information or you didn't have the wisdom that you have now. You didn't have the knowledge that you have now. For example, you guys, if you signed a work contract, perhaps you didn't read through the entire thing or perhaps you didn't understand the full scope of what signing this contract meant for your future. If you, sound, if you uh, signed a lease, perhaps you hate your apartment or there's this issue or there's that issue or you feel unsafe. You didn't understand the full scope of of what it meant to sign this lease right so that's how i'm seeing this it's like we made a commitment or we signed a lease or we signed some type of contract something we feel bound to something that we made like we made this decision at a really young age for some of you again this could be a relationship that you decided to participate in or get into at a really young age and you didn't understand the full scope of what was going on because you were young and i'm not trying to say that young people like can't think for themselves or don't have a brain that's not at all what I'm saying but I am saying as we gain knowledge and as we gain um you know as we go on in life we're always going to grow we're always going to learn we're always going to evolve mentally hopefully um so we may just have a different perspective on the situation or the choice that we made previously now for some of you this could be saying in freeing yourself or in stepping into more of a role of action or a role of I'm going to take responsibility for my life. It could be that we are meeting someone who we want to enter into this marriage with. It could be that we are meeting someone who we want to enter into some type of long lasting contract with, or uh, again, like going into a career where we do feel confident and safe entering into this contract. Again, you guys, it's going to be very split for everybody watching this because these on their own don't signify anything bad. If this came up in a different context with different cards throughout the reading, I would be like, oh, okay, well, marriage is good a young man like ooh, but because we're talking about this under the context of the rest of the cards it does give me that energy of i made a mistake because i didn't have the full knowledge or the full scope of what i was signing or the deal i was making all right we have change and we have journey these two cards are very much related we're moving, you guys. We're moving on. Again, either we are making a decision, like I'm taking action now in my life. I'm choosing to move forward. Or it's a situation where we are literally physically like packing our bags and we are moving. We are like, mm, you thought, babe, you thought you were going to stab me in the back. You thought I was going to be down, but I'm up. Goodbye. Um, this is beautiful. This is amazing, you guys. We are moving on. We are freeing ourselves from that eight of swords. We are moving the freak on. The fact that these two cards came out and they're in the same deck and they both signify change and like a physical move, I look at that as a really positive thing. So we are making these changes, you guys. I do think the situation is ultimately going to work out in your favor if you choose to step into that masculine energy. Not everybody here is going to choose to do that. And that's just the reality of the situation. That's just the reality of life. Um, but for those of you who choose to take action, for those of you who decide to sit down and make a plan on how to get yourself out of this cage, you will be successful in doing that. You will be successful in making this change in this transition. And I'm really excited for those of you who do choose to do that. And for those of you who choose to stay in the situation that you're in, it's understandable, right? It's, I don't want you to beat yourself up over that either. 
And maybe it's not time for you to end that cycle. Maybe you don't feel ready. Maybe you have not processed everything that you need to process or learned everything that you need to learn. But do know that as soon as you decide to take action with this, as soon as you decide I'm ready to move on, you will be fully capable of doing that, okay? The last card I have for you guys is a shadow work card. Now these cards can be mean sometimes, so please just understand I'm reading the card. It says uncompromising, all right? Think about being fair and working in harmony with another person. So the way I'm seeing this, you guys, again, under the context of the rest of this reading, is perhaps for the time being, for some of you, we still have to plan. We still have to come up with a game plan on how to get out of the situation, on how to release ourselves from this contract or this, whatever we feel is binding us up. In the meantime, make nice. In the meantime, make it a livable or workable situation for the meantime. That does not mean become complacent. That does not mean settle. That does not mean stay in this situation. That just means play nice, make it as as painless as you possibly can, compromise where you can, um, be as fair as you can, but that does not mean like stop hustling or stop trying to get yourself out of the situation. It's just, I feel like this is saying, do what it is that you can do, what it is that you can control to make the situation livable or bearable in the meantime, okay? Being being able to compromise is a valuable skill set, especially when you're in a situation that you don't feel like is favorable or you don't feel like is working for you and you know you need to get out of it, but in the meantime, you still need to stay in it or you still need to figure out how to get out. Be compromising, okay? Sometimes we have to swallow our pride in order to get to where we ultimately want to go, right? So that is the reading I have for you guys, group one. Please let me know down below if this has resonated. Um, I'm really excited for those of you, again, who choose to take this action and choose to step out of this cage or to free yourself from this cage. I feel like it's going to be an amazing adventure for you guys. And I'm really excited and proud of you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if this did resonate. And yeah, I love you guys. And I'll talk to you really soon. Hi, Gert 2. I was going to say 3. Hi, Gert 2. Welcome to your guys' reading. We will start off with the dice, you guys. If you're new here, the dice is just extra confirmation. It's just dessert. It's your sun, moon, or your rising. Or if there's somebody involved in today's reading, it could be their sun, moon, or rising. It's just extra. It's not the main course. So it's okay if your sign doesn't pop up. We have Libra and we have Scorpio. Hello, Libra. Hello, Scorpio. Scorpio and Virgo. Hello, Scorpio. Hello, Virgo. Uh, Aquarius and Pisces. Hello, Aquarius. Hello, Pisces. My eye also did shift to Cancer. So hello, honorable mention to the Kansas. Um, all right, guys, let's go ahead and shuffle the cards. That was very quick. Um, Page of Swords. Did anything else? I don't think anything else did. Okay. Can I get a brutally honest, a brutally honest message? Can I get some confirmation on the Page of Swords? Because I don't ever feel like the pages give me enough, Ooh, you know? Can I get... Okay. <laughs> so, moving on to the Oracle cards. Can I please get a card for group number two? A brutally honest card for group two. For the next three months. Can I get a brutally honest? Whew. Lighten your load. That's interesting. Okay. That was a lot. Um, can I please get a, did something flip? Something did flip, okay. Transformation with the butterfly. Can I please get, can I? Some of you guys need to go home. <laughs> like some of you guys need to go see your family. Okay. Can I please get a brutally honest? 
can I do get a Can I please get a brutally honest message for group two? Can I please get a brutally, ooh, narrow-minded? Okay, group one. So, I mean, gosh, dang it, group two. All right, group two. So, page of swords, five of wands reverse to clarify. The page of swords, you guys, talks about an energy that is very inquisitive. It's very fresh. It's like, you know how I see the page of swords, you guys? I see it as this energy of being young and stepping out into the world and having all these questions or having all these like new obstacles we have to learn how to overcome or how to deal with, uh, such as like taxes or learning how to pay your rent or I don't know, budgeting, things like that. Um, and obviously it does not have to be that specific situation, you guys. It can be something easier or something less severe. Uh, but I see this as us stepping into a new situation and having a lot of questions or having a lot of curiosity in regards to that situation. I also see this, you guys, as having an energy of um, wanting to grow our minds, perhaps. Um, also, having new ideas being inflamed within us or having new ideas sparking up for us right so page of swords to clarify that you guys we do have the five of wands in reverse and that signifies a battle within ourself right this is like a self battle an internal battle so the way i'm seeing this maybe you guys are really struggling between two ideas that you have or two projects you're wanting to pursue or two different options or three different options or however many different options but it to me it's like i'm going back and forth in my mind like i can't figure out what it is I want to do exactly or I can't pinpoint where to put my energy or my focus on this could be in regards to trying to come up with a major like what do I want to do when I go to university this could be talking about where you want to live who you want to be with the kind of person you're wanting to develop yourself into um, obviously if you are more evolved or if you're older it could be a situation where you're at a crossroads in your life and you are deciding like all right, like I, I've stepped into this chapter of my life and like now what, right? Like I don't know exactly what I want to do now, but I do know that I want to continue to grow. I do know I want to continue to evolve. And there could be an internal struggle within yourself between like wanting to evolve and wanting to get better, but also wanting to stay the same or feeling comfortable in our routine. We have the Ace, uh, or I'm so sorry. Yeah, the Ace of Cups in reverse, you guys. The Ace of Cups group two talks about needing to focus on self-love. When this is upright, talking about like love of all sorts, our love is overflowing. When this is in reverse group number two, this is talking about needing to put that love, that focus back on ourselves. Perhaps that's something you guys have been working on um, recently or over the past year or two, and you've really, really done the work and effort to like, bring love to yourself or to show yourself more appreciation or to be gentle with yourself or to heal yourself, right? So that's how I see this. It's like we need to focus on self-love or we need to continue to focus on feeding and growing ourselves. We also have the King of Swords that popped up group number two. And the King of Swords, when he pops up in this context, he's popping up and it talks about um, moving in silence, like making decisions silently, not blasting your next steps or not talking to everybody or sharing all of your intimate details with the world or with your family or with your friends. I'm also seeing this perhaps as a misuse of power or manipulation. Whenever the kings come up in reverse, they have a little bit of like sinister energy. So I don't know if you're feeling manipulated, you guys, or if you're feeling again, it could just be confusion, right? It literally could just be confusion on what it is we're doing. So there could be this like back and forth energy. But the king, again, the king of swords in reverse, it signifies a misuse of power, manipulation potentially, or like mentally dominating someone else. We have the Hierophant in reverse as well, you guys, and the Hierophant is connected to Taurus energy. The Hierophant in reverse talks about going against the status quo, going against the grain. This is deciding that we are going to choose a different path. This is deciding that like I'm not going to do what everybody else 
has done, right? I'm choosing my own path. I'm choosing to go forward in a direction that may be unfamiliar to me, that may be unfamiliar to the people around me, but this is what I want to do. This is what I feel called to do. So with everything here, you guys, it does feel like there's like a uncomfortable decision we have to make or a decision that we've been going back and forth in our minds or within our own internal selves about moving forward with this decision or not moving forward with this decision. Um, and there's this energy of like the unknown and wanting to have control because that may also be what this King of Swords is talking about. It's like, I'm an intellectual and I make decisions based on reason. I make decisions based on, you know, what logically makes sense. And perhaps this thing that you've been thinking about or pondering upon is not making sense or it's more of an emotional decision so we're struggling to make that and we also feel like we're going against the status quo or we feel like we're going against what is expected of us so there's this like hesitancy here the seven of pentacles is signifying hard work and effort so it's like we have this potential in front of us we have opportunities or potential abundance that we could bring into the world or we can manifest but it's going to take a lot of hard work and effort and there's no guarantee that it's going to work it feels like a gamble almost for you guys there's a risk that there needs to be taken here and i feel like we're struggling internally with if we should take this risk or not that's basically what all these cards are saying right it's like i have an idea um an idea that perhaps inspires me or brings a lot of curiosity to my mind it like fills me up with adrenaline and excitement and it's new and it's fresh but I'm going back and forth within myself about like is this the right thing does it, is this smart um does that even make sense to do this and then there's this feeling of like I want to listen to my heart and give myself what I know my soul needs but then it's like I'm really analytical and I like to make decisions based on logic and reason and then there's going against the status quo and it just feels like exhausting honestly you guys like this whole situation feels freaking exhausting because we're fighting with our within ourselves so if you're not fighting within your self group too this is probably not the reading for you um or if you don't see a situation like that occurring within the next three months this is probably not for you because i do feel like this is something that we have been pondering on or struggling with wrestling with within our own internal selves for a while um and i don't know what exactly is going on with this like going against the grain or going against the status quo but it feels like you guys are wanting to go in a direction that is not safe or not like there's no safety net to catch you guys there's no backup plan it feels like we're putting all our cards on the table and we're saying this is what i have this is what i have this is where i want to go and if this fails like i'm gonna kind of be screwed but i feel like you guys are leaning towards taking this risk okay so again seven of pentacles willing to put hard work and effort into something that may not work it may not come to fruition it may not be prosperous but i feel like this is something we're passionate about i feel like this is something we're feeling called to and i kind of feel like we should take the risk okay so this could be a relationship as well you guys it could be again a situation where it's like logically like does this make sense maybe it's a long distance relationship or maybe it's a a person who you don't feel like looks good on paper or they're not they don't share the same religious background as you or they don't share the same a b and c as you or your family and you're like i don't know if this is gonna work logistically but i love this person and i want to be with this person because it like they make me happy but it's going against the status quo and it's gonna take a lot of hard work and effort and then it may not even go anywhere but it's like i want it so that's what this feels like you guys it feels like a situation that we internally want we're really curious about it we have curiosity but we're going back and forth within our own selves on if this is even worth it and we're fighting between our mind and our heart that's what it feels like we have numos and this is the unknown the unknowable esp psychic abilities the cosmos universal truth oneness source the unmameable um shadow work inner knowing tingle tingling ghosts other worlds space enigmas the occult and intuition group number two so you guys have to trust your intuition group too like that's literally all i can say about this like you just need to freaking listen to your intuition listen to your gut listen 
really, really closely to what it is that feels right. Because I personally feel like for some of you, you're leaning towards like what your mind is telling you or what logically makes sense and you're ignoring your intuition. Or you're leaning too much to what your heart wants and you're ignoring your intuition. Neither, like this and this, I don't feel like you need to listen to. It's not that you don't need to listen to your heart or you don't need to listen to your mind. But what's really important here is listening to your intuition and listening to what feels right in your gut. All right. (sighs) Tapping into the knowledge as well, tapping into spirit, tapping into perhaps subtle messages that may be coming through for you guys. Okay. (sighs) Okay. Um, we have Uranus here, you guys, and Uranus is revolution. Okay. And it says breakthroughs, brainstorming, originality, insight, awakening, technology, innovation, humanitarianism, reform, surprise, freedom, experimentation, the unexpected, rapture, edge, diversity, and lightning. Uranus comes in, you guys, to shake your life up. Uranus is connected to Aquarius energy. This is very much Like, get ready for your life to go through an earth-shaking moment. Get ready for your life to be turned upside down. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, you guys. I'm someone who very much believes in this. If you want change, you have to invoke chaos. Uranus is that chaos, okay? If you want your life to stay the same and to stay consistently how it's been currently, that's fine. That's fine. Keep doing what you're doing. If you want nothing in your life to change, keep doing what you're doing and it won't change, right? If you're wanting your life to change, if you're wanting to experience this going against the grain, going against the status quo, um, listening to your heart perhaps, right? Tapping into your intuition, you have to invoke chaos. You have to accept that things are not gonna be comfortable. You have to accept that like this is inevitable. For things to change, a little bit of chaos or a lot of chaos is inevitable and it's necessary, okay? And for some of you, that's an, an uncomfortable thought and it's understandable, we're humans, we enjoy being comfortable, we enjoy things that are familiar to us, and things that are unfamiliar to us we view as scary, or we view as bad. I think, oh, I don't know if I should talk about this, this is going to be controversial, you guys, and I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but I do find, and I'll just speak for myself, um, when I was somebody who was very much connected to organized religion, right, the hierophant, um, I thought that so many different things about the world were scary. I thought other religions were scary. I thought people who worshipped different gods were scary. Um, Only when I decided that I no longer wanted to subscribe to one way of thinking was my world opened up and was I able to see how many different like possibilities um, are in the world and how beautiful the world actually is and how beautiful other religions actually are. Sometimes when we stay in our same line of thinking or our same line of belief systems, right, we are missing opportunities to grow. We are missing opportunities to expand, okay? And again, it's very comfortable to stay in our comfort zone. It's very comfortable to stay consistent with what we know and what is comfortable for us. And it's scary to explore what is outside of that. But I promise you guys, oftentimes when we step out of our comfort zone, when we discover or when we open ourselves up to a little bit of chaos, I feel like we learn so much and I feel like we have so many more opportunities to experience beauty in the world, right? So I've just felt like I needed to say that because I think the Hierophant being here was giving me a very um, religious vibe and it was reminding me a lot of my own religious experiences where I felt very like in this one lane uh, and everything outside that lane was very scary and how my life got so much better when I decided to step out of that. So anyways, we have home. Okay, so this could be connected you guys to perhaps moving, changing homes. Maybe you guys are wanting to work from home. That could be the going against the grain or doing something that's non-conventional. Um, this could also be connected to, again, like moving away from your home, moving away from your family, non-conventional. This could be talking about perhaps having a need to set a stronger foundation in your life for yourself. Reevaluating your living situation. We have lighten your load, group number two. 
there could be a lot on your shoulders right now and there could be a need to get rid of the things that are no longer serving you or get rid of the things that honestly like you just don't, that aren't making you happy they're not bringing anything positive into your life there's no benefit from doing these things but you continue to do them because it's habit or you continue to do them because you're like oh well this is what i'm supposed to do lighten your load release the things that you no longer need right getting rid of things you guys is so freeing i feel like cleaning out your life is such a spiritual experience when you can decide like I no longer need this thing I no longer need whether it's a physical item or whether it's like an, an emotional or a mental loop we keep ourselves in when we go I no longer need this to be happier I no longer need this to feel comfortable oh my gosh like the freedom the shackles come off right we have life purpose yeah, guys, this is why it's important to listen to your intuition. Like this right here is exactly why it's so important to listen to your intuition, because without listening to your intuition, it's going to be so incredibly difficult to find your life purpose or to feel connected to your life purpose. If you are strictly listening to your emotional state, and I'm not saying our emotions should not be trusted, because I think our emotions are very connected to our intuition. However, we all know if we're being very realistic, sometimes people can be over emotional and act out of a place of heightened emotion that's not necessarily sensible. So that's why I'm saying like, I don't feel like this is a reading or this is a message where you guys need to strictly listen to what your emotions are saying or strictly listen to what your head is saying. It's a combination of the two and it's mainly rooted in your intuition. Um, life purpose. Finding your life purpose, you guys, may be something that's happening within the next three months, but it may, again, cause a little bit of chaos or cause a major shakeup in your life, okay? Discomfort. <sighs> yeah, oh my God, we got the butterfly spirit. Transformation is beautiful. You guys, do you know what a butterfly has to do to become a butterfly? Like, seriously? It's not comfortable. If someone told me that I had to go into a sleeping bag and they were going to liquefy my body and I was going to turn into mushy gushiness and my body was going to be completely reconfigured into something else, but I was going to be happier in this something else and I was going to have a, a different outlook on life or different capabilities, I'd be like, honestly, I'm so good. Like, you do not need to do that. I do not want my body liquefied. I'm good. I'm not trying to live in a sleeping bag for months. I'll just stay like this. But guys, obviously, who wouldn't want to be a butterfly? Like who, like why would a caterpillar not want to be a butterfly? Butterflies can fly. Caterpillars got to sit there and struggle, struggle to walk when you could just fly. That's what this is saying, guys. The change, the transformation is going to be super uncomfortable. It's going to be gross. It's going to feel icky sometimes. But right now it's like you're struggling to walk or you're you're inching to walk, right? You're like doing that little caterpillar scoot when you could just fly, okay? So this is going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to happen overnight. This is going to be a process, guys. But at the end of it, you're not going to be struggling anymore. You're going to be able to fly. Okay, so we have the visit, all right? There could be things, you guys, that we have to revisit or things that we have to reevaluate to close out. I was saying when this came up, there may be a need for you guys to go back home and like visit your family or visit your hometown. That may be something you guys need to do. However, now that we've gone through the reading and I've read the cards, this feels more like an energy of we need to make sure that all those doors that we have walked past or all those chapters that we have read, we need to make sure that we are really closing the book now. We need to make sure that that is really done. We need to make sure that that chapter of our life has fully closed out because if we don't fully close that chapter or fully close those doors, we run the risk of them popping back up later and disrupting our butterfly time, okay? And we don't want our butterfly time to be freaking disrupted. So I see this as revisiting or revising things from the past taking a second look, taking time to close those out properly, taking time to cut those strings properly. The enemy. Okay. So who is the enemy in your life, you guys? Is it you? Is it those things from the past we need to cut out, those things from the past we need to revisit and close? I see this, you guys, as us making the executive decision to step up and to address our baggage or to address 
our obstacles or to address what we view as like the enemy in our life. So what right now is holding you back from being a butterfly group too? What right now is holding you back from being able to fly? Is it money? Is it your current career? Is it your friends? Is it your family? Is it your relationship? Is it your self-limiting beliefs? What is it? Are you afraid? Like, it's time for us to eliminate that enemy. It's time for us to put an end to that and make, again, make the executive decision to rise above that and move on. I have the courthouse, you guys. This is talking about making final decisions, okay? Whenever the courthouse comes up, for me, it signifies like there is a solidified decision that needs to be made. There's no going back after those papers are signed. There's no going back after this decision is made. We need to seriously, group number two, zero in on this choice, zero in on what it is we're wanting to do and commit to that. The courthouse is commitment. I And whether we are literally signing papers or internally we are just deciding this is the path I'm going down, try to stop me this is the path i'm going down and that's this is what we're doing like it feels like we need to commit to a path commit to a road commit to a, a freaking <laughs> what is coming next don't be like oh i kind of want to go here and i kind of want to go there and i don't really know like we need to pick like there it feels like there needs to be some solidification in our decision making okay group two and it could be with our occupation all right i do feel like this feels like an overwhelming sense of like we need to get our money up. We need to address perhaps the things in our career that's making us unhappy group two. Occupation. All right. And I don't want to be mean and be like, get it together. But for your own sake, I feel like there's a need to get it together. All right, guys. Is what you're doing making you happy? Do you feel like what you're doing right now, group two, is your life purpose? Do you feel like what you're doing right now is ultimately making, like, what is your goal with your career? Is it money? Is it to feel like you're doing something positive in the world? Is it to create? What is it that you feel like you're supposed to be doing genuinely, group two? What do you feel like you're supposed to be doing? I feel like once you answer that, you're gonna have your answer in regards to like how it is to move forward or where it is you need to go to move forward, right? I do definitely feel like the occupation, our job, our income is playing a big role in this entire reading. Nothing here feels overly emotional. And for some of you, it is like for some of you, this could have to do with personal relationships. But throughout this reading, it has felt more like there is a focus on the career or there needs to be a refocusing on money, how we make money, our relationship with money. <sighs> And I feel like also our finances is obviously directly connected to our ability to make change in our life, right? And what I mean by that, and I don't want anyone to take this offensively, you guys, because I'm not a freaking elitist, okay? I grew up in a really, really bad neighborhood. Um, not This is not like a pity party for me, but what I'm about to say is going to sound really kind of like my nose up in the air, and it's not. When you're able to make more money, you're able to create obviously a different life for yourself. You're able to put yourself in surroundings that are of better quality. I don't think it should be like this, but this is just how the world is, guys. Like people who have more money have more opportunity to experience nicer things. And again, I don't think this is how the world should necessarily be. I think everyone should have the opportunity to experience nice experiences. Um, but for example, like if you're financially struggling, you're not going to spend extra money on going out to nice restaurants or you're not going to spend extra money on travel. You're not going to spend extra money on being able to go to the gym or go to a really nice gym or live in a really nice area. Um, if you're struggling with money, there's going to be this sense of like, I need to save, I need to conserve and I have to cut where I can cut. And that limits our ability to experience certain experiences. And again, I just want to make it clear again that I don't think the world should be like this. I think everyone should have access to travel. I think travel is such an important thing for everyone's growth and evolution. I think being able to connect to different types of people around the world is such a beautiful experience and I wish everyone could do that. Um, so it's not that I think that the world should be like this, you guys. Sometimes I say stuff with that's just very matter of fact and it's like, it's not that I like, I don't want the world to be like this, but this is just how the world is. So with your occupation, ask yourself, you guys, like, is this bringing me the opportunity or the life experiences that I want to live, right? All right, we have thought patterns, get out of your head and into your heart. This is the truth. Okay, 
get out of your head and into your heart. The freaking King of Swords and the Ace of Cups. There is a need to listen to your intuition, you guys. There is a need to listen to your intuition. And I'm not saying to abandon logic because I don't think that's healthy either. But there is a need to invoke more of a sense of like, this feels right for me internally. Like this feels like I'm doing the right thing. Get out of your head. Stop overthinking group two. This group is, a lot of you watching this are overthinkers and I feel like that's holding you back. We have stalemate and it says a stalemate situation. Someone needs to take decisive action. Yeah. If you do nothing, nothing will change. If you want to stay the same, keep doing what you're doing and you will stay the same. If you want change, you have to release yourself from the stalemate. You have to invoke chaos. You have to bring in things that are going to make you uncomfortable group two. The last card I have is narrow-minded and it says you have a limited outlook. Uh, sorry. It's narrow-minded. You have a limited outlook on perspective and thoughts. <laughs> what makes you think your thoughts are solid gold? Okay, remember I was saying narrow-minded? Okay, we have that freaking, I, I gave you guys the example of my past religious practices. When you keep a narrow mind and you don't allow yourself to even see other opportunities or even see another way of being, you're gonna stay in this little bubble. And there, the world is so big, you guys. Like there's so many opportunities in the world. Anything is possible. And I really do mean that group too. I really, really mean that. I truly believe everything anything under the sun is possible but you have to release yourself from the bubble of this is the only reality that exists i always say this i have a lot of earth sign people in my life okay and this is not any hate towards the earth signs because i love you and i need you in my life um but i have a lot of uh very stubborn very um grounded people in my life who have a difficult time seeing life outside of what it already is right so when we have conversations um that have to do with government or that have to do with finances i speak in ways where it's like well we could make changes in this way we could come up with a different system to make this better why are we settling for just how it is and when we come to this conclusion that like this is just how my life is and there is no changing it and this is the reality of this and this is the reality of that and I'm never going to get out of these parameters. You're limiting yourself group too. So please like for your own sake try to expand your mind and expand the possibilities. Give yourself permission to dream. Give yourself permission to have a wider vision of what your future can be. Don't limit yourself. Don't put yourself in a box. Don't say this is the only thing that I can do because you have unlimited options group too. <sighs> okay. Thank you guys. Let me know below if this resonated or if you're excited. Honestly, this feels like a really big opportunity to have a massive shift in your life. And I'm excited for you guys. Let me know if you're excited. Thank you. I love you. And I'll talk to you very soon. All right. Bye. Hi, group three. Welcome to your guys' reading. Let's go ahead and roll the dice. If you're new here, the dice is just extra confirmation, you guys. Sun, moon, rising, your sign, or somebody who could potentially be involved in today's reading sign. It could also just be the energy of the reading or the energy of the next three months, you guys. Okay. We have Sagittarius and Capricorn. Hello, Saggy. Hello, Kathy. Love you guys. Cancer and Aquarius. Hello, Cancer. Hello, Aquarius. Please don't. Cancer. Just Cancer. Okay. We love the water signs here. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll. Or not roll. We're not rolling. We're shuffling. Uh, can I please get a brutally honest message for the next three months for group number three? A brutally honest message. Spirit said, you deserve it. Okay, group three. Well, let me not speak too soon. But like so far, so good. Can I please get a brutally honest message for group number three? Huh. Still doing good. Can I get a you guys, honestly, I love this. Can I get a brutally honest message for something flipped? Yes, you guys. Okay, see, all your reversals are like, it's positive that they're in the reverse. Can I please get... Love this. I'm so excited for you guys, group three. Can I... Ooh. Everyone has gotten transformation. Group one, group two, and you guys, group three, have now gotten transformation. So I love that for all of us. Can I please get 
can I please get a brutally honest message for group three for the next three months? Mm. Can I please get a brutally honest message for group number three? Can I please? Okay. So there we go. Ooh. Can, ooh, we have a journey. We have jealousy. Can I get one more? Thank you. We have poverty. Pote. All right. Can I? Group three. Group three. I'm loving this for you guys. lovely okay the first card that came out for you guys was the empress okay now i'm a little biased but whenever the empress comes out i'm just like oh this group is fine this group is gonna be living the life so your brutally honest message for the next three months, you guys, is you need to be more freaking creative. You need to step into your feminine energy. You need to embody the energy of the Empress. What is the energy of the Empress? Again, she is divine femininity. Whether you're a man or a woman, this is being connected to your emotions. This is respecting your emotions, you guys. This is being creative. This is being loving and nurturing, not only to others, but to yourself. Um, I also feel like this is putting yourself and your own needs first, right? I feel like masculine energy is more about, it's, it's goal oriented, it's focused on like a final product. I feel like feminine energy needs to be more like self-focused and needs to be, I don't want to say selfish, but like just more nurturing to oneself, filling one's cup right feeling your own cup so maybe this is encouraging you guys that you need to focus more on your creative endeavors or your creative projects or what it is that brings you happiness what it is that brings you joy what it is that inspires you reconnecting to your inspiration you guys how dull is life when you don't feel inspired when you don't feel like you are motivated to do anything this does not have to be like you are quite literally sitting down and painting a painting or sculpting or doing music or composing like you don't have to literally be doing something that is considered creative anything in life can be creative you need to find your inspiration though. You need to find your next muse. You need to find your next passion. You need to find what is going to bring that spark into your life again, okay? I feel like there's a need to bring something new in that's going to refresh us of our creative energy and what's going to refresh us of our feminine energy as well, okay? Also, feminine energy is very much the energy of receiving, right? So being ready to receive, group number three. You need to be ready to receive. We have the page of freaking pentacles. Now, the page of pentacles, you guys, this is stepping up. This is leveling up. How can I level myself up mentally? All right, what are you feeding to your mind, group three? What are you giving your brain? What are you feeding to your ears? What are you feeding your body, right? What are you putting in your body? And that's just not food, you guys. That's like people too. Are the people that you are engaging in, are they quality people? Like, are they good for your soul? Are they making you feel like worthy are they making you feel important like does it do you feel good after those interactions is what i'm saying are you feeling good after watching freaking reality tv for five hours are you feeling good and here's the other thing right whoa 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 because i can hear some of you and you're just like yeah but like i need to relax too a hundred percent relax right i'm not someone who's like never eat anything bad never watch horrible shows or like trash tv never um you know it's okay to indulge it's okay to have moments in life where we are sitting and just watching things that are freaking trashy or engaging with people that are just we know they're not the best but they're fun and they invoke ex in they invoke excitement that's okay every once in a while but what are you feeding your mind body and soul what are you putting in your energy field okay 
it's time to level that up. And that again is not to say that you can never indulge. That's just to say that like, how can we better ourselves? I feel like the message that you guys need to hear, the brutal, on the brutally honest message you guys need to hear group three is like, it's time to level up. It's time to step up. It's time to step into your power. It's time to level up financially, level up physically. And physically can just be confidence, right? It's time to level up with what it is you're engaging in in your day to day. It's time to step up. And this is a great thing. Now, this is where I'm really excited. And some of you are looking at this and you're like, mm, that doesn't look great. The five of pentacles in reverse is fantastic. This is financial recovery. This is the comeback story, you guys. This is, I took a year off and cut you some slack. Okay, that's what this card is. This card is literally like, I'm back. Like, that's what this is. It's I'm back. All right, be prepared because girlie's back and I'm, I'm coming for blood. That is what the five of pentacles in reverse is. It's I'm recovering from this situation that has brought me down. 2022 may have been really difficult for you guys or the previous years you guys have experienced may have been really difficult for you guys. I don't know when you're watching this, so I don't wanna <laughs> specify a specific year, but you guys may have been going through a difficult time when you're watching this and we're coming out of that, right? The sun is coming out, the storm has passed and we're we're ready to move on and we're ready to recover now. This is This is our comeback story, all right, group three? Now, this is where we're going to talk. We got to have a serious conversation, group three. This is self-doubt, all right? This is our thoughts, our negative thought patterns, perhaps our pessimistic um, tendencies are affecting our ability to be happy. You have to be careful. You have to be mindful, group three, of again, what you are putting into your ears, what you're allowing yourself to listen to, what you're allowing yourself to watch, what you're allowing yourself to consume, whether that is like food or whether that is like another person or whether that is an interaction with people who are negative, what are you putting your, your body, your mind, your soul around, okay, you guys? You have to be mindful of that because that is affecting your mindset and your mind creates your reality, right? If you have a negative mindset, you're going to have negative words. If you have negative words, you're going to have negative actions, you guys. And if you have negative actions, like your life is going to be negative. So first step, the first thing we need to address group three, if you find yourself in a loop of talking down to yourself or belittling yourself or saying, I can't do this, or this isn't realistic, or I'm never going to have this. I'm never going to have that. If you keep yourself in that loop, that's what's going to happen. Okay. I cannot tell you how many people in my life that I know personally that have that mindset and they keep experiencing the thing that they keep saying they're going to experience because they don't ever give themselves an opportunity to change their perspective and to change their mindset and to experience something different. And I used to be one of those people where I was really negative and I was really just like, the world is ending, <laughs> like the sky is falling. And as soon as I was like, actually, maybe the sky is not falling. Maybe things are falling apart because something, something better is about to happen. And every time I've done that, you guys, I swear to goodness, like, life does get better. It just does. Your mindset really, truly does affect your freaking reality. If you make the the progressive action, if you take action to change your mindset and you catch yourself every time you're talking down to yourself or you catch yourself every time you're having a pessimistic thought, your life will change. And I'm not saying that you're never, and I, I hate that I have to say this, but I know there are some people here who are watching who don't know me and you don't know my intentions it's okay to have negative thoughts sometimes, you guys. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to experience your emotions. I'm not someone who's like love and light. I'm very much in the gray. I think life is gray. I think we're humans and we're supposed to have human experiences. And that means sometimes our experiences aren't going to be positive. Sometimes our thoughts aren't going to be positive. Sometimes our emotions aren't going to be positive. And that is okay. But what I'm saying is if we constantly allow ourselves to live in the dark, if we allow our, our mind to live in a negative mindset forever, we're never going to experience anything other than a negative reality. Okay. So sorry, Charlie. The next card we got here is the fool. <sighs> Group three. I see you guys getting rid of things. I see you guys cutting off friendships. Perhaps I see you guys leaving your job putting in that two week notice and being like, honestly, I can't work here anymore. I just can't. It's making me miserable. It's making me unhappy. I can't live in this house anymore. It's making me miserable. It's making me unhappy. I can't be in this friendship because I feel like it's one sided. I can't be in this relationship because it's giving me anxiety. I should not have anxiety. I should not be fearful 
of the person that I'm in love with or the person I'm in a relationship with. I have the right to be happy. I have the right to experience life at a higher frequency. I have that right. And I feel like what this card is representing is you guys deciding to cut your losses and to go forward and to find that happiness, okay? And there may be a lot of things you have to let go of group three. There may be a lot of people you have to cut out or a lot of changes you have to make in order to do that. But I feel like it's going to be worth it. And for a lot of you, it may be really difficult to release those things, um, whether they are physical possessions or whether they are people or situations or a career that you really thought was going to be long lasting or perhaps, you know, last in, for the rest of your life. But I feel like we are releasing ourselves of burdens. We're releasing ourselves of everything that is trying to hold us back from our happiness. And we are taking the initiative to go do what makes us happy, to go be the person we've always wanted to be. That's a little lighter energy. We love Libras here. Um, so we have Libra. <laughs> this is the idealist and it says, harmonious, cooperative, balanced, socially aware. Perhaps you guys are choosing to put yourself out there socially more. Artistic, again, that M percent energy of being creative. Um, people pleasing, that is something to watch out for group three. Fair, idealistic, aesthetic, choosy, aspirational, uh, geometric, graceful, considerate, obliging, indecisive, judgmental, and flattery. So you may be a Libra, you may have heavy, heavy Libra placements, okay? When this comes up, you guys, honestly, Libra always reminds me of like love and the seventh house and Venus. And it's just a reminder to choose the things that make you feel good. Choose the things that make you happy. Choose the beauty in life. Choose what is going to bring in more love, right? Don't choose what's going to be destructive. Don't choose what's going to bring you misery. Also finding balance, finding harmony, which can be really difficult, you guys. I don't want to make it sound like finding balance and harmony is super easy. All right. We also have the 12th house here, you guys. This is the subconscious mind, compassion, dreams, karma, forgiveness, baggage, um, trance states, unseen, healing, spiritual development, guilt, prayer, and Akashic records, okay? This is also um, connected to like endings and like hidden enemies and things like that, you guys. This is all things that are like hidden and not necessarily things that we are aware of. So when this comes up in a reading, you guys, I see this as an energy of there may be people or situations or thought patterns that we are completely unaware of that are that's holding us back or preventing us from living the happiest life that we could live. I'm seeing this as we may not see like where the problem is coming from. We may not have full clarity on why things are going the way they're going or why things seem to never work out or why we don't feel happy. We may not have a full awareness or clarity on why that's going on. Um, the 12th house is also the last house in the wheel. So I see this as perhaps again a need to like close cycles out or to put something to rest, put something to a final like end releasing that baggage perhaps I think it's really interesting you guys that the fool comes up and the fool talks about yeah like not taking any baggage with us from our past like moving forward in a new direction and all our baggage all our belongings we've just released them we were like you know what I can't carry all this stuff with me I have to drop it off or I have to give it away or I have to sell it off like I cannot bring all my possessions with me to go into my future or to go where I'm trying to go. Like it's gonna just slow me down, hold me back and I have to let it go because I wanna move forward. That's kind of how I'm seeing the 12th house. The 12th house is like addressing the baggage, addressing what it is we have to release. We have finding, we also have courage here. And I wanna talk about these two together because I do feel like they are connected, finding courage. We are finding courage, we're finding confidence. There's a butterfly in this depiction here, you guys, which signifies transfer. Oh my gosh, hold on, I'll finish this and then we'll go back. It signifies transformation, it signifies change. Um, there's a need for us to be a little brave, group number three. And that makes sense, especially with the fool here. 
right? And also with the page of pentacles and us having a need to level up, it's, and I've talked about this in every single reading, you guys, it's so weird. All these readings are different, but similar. Um, it's scary, right? It's scary to leave everything behind and to start over. But I feel like the brutally honest message you guys need to hear is you need to invoke your inner bravery. You need to invoke your inner courage. Um, I feel like what is happening over the next three months may be a little bit, it's unknown. It's not clear. It's not that path forward is not something that we're necessarily comfortable with, but I do feel like ultimately it's leading you down the road of like a really beautiful adventure. And I also feel like you're going to be really proud of yourself once you get past that or once you do take those steps into what is coming up next. Once you decide like, okay, yes, I'm going and you start walking, I feel like you're going to be like, wow, I'm so proud of myself for doing this. I feel like it's going to give you a lot of confidence because you're going to realize like there's there's nothing I can't do. Like I can trust myself to take care of myself. I can trust myself that no matter what happens, like I'm going to be okay. That's kind of what this feels like. Coming back to being able to trust yourself or discovering that you can trust yourself and that you are capable. Um, the next card I have here is Pluto, you guys, and it says renewal uh, inner resources, basic instinct, motivation, personal power, evolution, composting, cycle, death, rebirth, um, sub, uh, subversion, <laughs> suspicion, uh, obsession, intensity, reckoning, taboos, clearing, and extremes. Pluto is connected to transformation. It's also connected to Scorpio energy, you guys. This is change. All right. This is transformation. And Pluto is not gentle. Pluto's not going to kiss you on the head and be like, I love you. Good night. Sweet dreams. Pluto is going to be like, I'm going to rock your stuff. Like you, you are, get ready. All right. Get ready. And you're not going to like it. You're not going to love it. All right. You're not going to love it. But once you're done, like you're going to have something new. You know what I see Pluto as always? I see Pluto as like a piece of coal being put under pressure and being turned into a diamond. And it's like that pressure is so much and it's, it's uncomfortable. And we're just like, I can't withstand this pressure. But then it's like, oh, now I'm a diamond. You know, you made me hard. You made me uh, strong. I feel like I wouldn't go back and change who I am. Pluto's coming in to bring through transformation, you guys, to bring through change. And I do feel like that change has a lot to do with, again, you guys leveling up, you guys choosing. Oh, there is literally like crystals. Duh. Um, you guys choosing to level up. You guys choosing to better yourself or to inspire yourself to go after something, right? Come on here. Okay. We have be loyal to what you love. Honestly, you guys, when I picked this up, I thought it said be loyal to what you want. Be loyal to what you want. I feel like this is also saying like be unapologetic. Be unapologetic about where you want to go, who you want to be. Okay. You don't need to explain yourself, group three. If you have a wild dream, if you have a wild desire and everyone around you is like, I don't get why you would want to do that. Who cares? Like be unapologetic about who you are. Be unapologetic about what you want. Okay. You are allowed to paint whatever you want on your canvas and nobody else has the right to dictate that painting, right? Be loyal to yourself and your desires, group three. We have the dolphin and it says this and that is true. You guys know, okay, and I hate to bring this up. I really do because I just know there are people who are going to misinterpret what I'm saying and they're going to be like, you're saying this when I'm not saying that. Um, so I'm going to try to choose my words very thoughtfully. Um, there are people in this world, you guys, and this is an example, and this is not necessarily pertaining to your situation, but there are people in the world, you guys, who have done horrific things, horrific things that they deserve, they deserve, they deserve to be imprisoned for, or they deserve to be cast out of society for, or they deserve some type of punishment or some type of reckoning, if you will. Um, that does not take away from the fact that there's somebody in the world who loves those horrendous people who've done horrendous things. That does not take away the fact that this person may have been capable of doing something kind at one point in their life. Um, the way I see this dolphin card, when it says this and that is true, 
And that was a really intense example, you guys, but that's always what comes up automatically when I see this card. But what I'm saying is, it's very possible, you guys, that this next chapter is going to be a chapter that you love and that you cherish and that you are excited for. And there's so much growth and expansion for you guys in the horizon, right? That doesn't mean that you didn't love this last chapter. That doesn't mean that you didn't cherish the experiences that you already have had or the current situation that you're in, the current cycle that you're in. That doesn't mean that there's a lack of appreciation. Um, another way we can see this, you guys, it's like, we can have a career, we can be in a job that perhaps doesn't make us the happiest or they're not paying us what we want to be paid, but that doesn't mean I'm not appreciative for that opportunity. That doesn't mean I'm not grateful for the experience. Um, another example is I going through a breakup. Our relationship was beautiful. That doesn't mean it didn't have issues. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean it doesn't have problems. It doesn't mean that we don't deserve better. Um, that's not to throw everything away, right? That's not to poop on something and say, oh, I'm moving on, this just sucked, goodbye. Like, two things could be true at the same time, right? Things could be bad, but they could also be good. Like, it's not black and white is what I'm saying with this dolphin garden. Life's not black and white. So you don't have to look at the situation that we're evolving from as a black and white situation. We have the skunk spirit and it's know your worth. So what you guys need to hear, the brutally honest truth is stop selling yourself short, group three. Stop selling yourself short. Stop undervaluing yourself. Stop allowing people to walk all over you. Stop allowing companies or your work situation to underpay you or to overwork you or to give you more than what it is they're paying you for to make you do more than what they're paying you for. Um, stop allowing people in your personal relationships to take advantage of you or to talk to you disrespectfully. Know your worth. Know that you are worthy of respect. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of your worth. Like you are worth more than the disrespect, right? So do not allow people to disrespect you. Moving forward, you guys, remember your worth, okay? And don't feel, again, be unapologetic about that. There's no need to be like, oh, well, mm, I don't want to ask for more money or I don't want to ask for like, if they're only going to give me this and like, I deserve that. Like, don't be afraid to ask for what you deserve and be ready to receive. I don't want to read that yet. We will read Jealousy and Journey. So I feel like what you guys need to hear is you are going on a journey. There is, again, major transformation and change taking place for you guys, and that may cause a lot of jealousy in your personal relationships between friends or family members, even possibly relationships. Um, I think what you guys need to hear with this is where you're going, not everyone with you can come right? Sometimes when we level up and you guys are leveling up because we do have that page of pentacles. Sometimes when you level up, the people who are in your life or the situations that you have become accustomed to are no longer going to be compatible with this new version of you or with this new life that you are having, okay? So there could be people that we have to let go of. There could be comforts or routines we have to evolve from. We have party, and this is talking about having fun, you guys. I feel like you guys are entering into a season group three where you're going to have more fun, where you're going to be more social, um, where you feel motivated to put yourself out there, where you feel like this is a time in your life to celebrate, okay? I feel like you guys are gonna, also going to have a lot to be proud of. I feel like this is you almost putting yourself up on a pedestal and being like, I freaking did that, okay? I overcame the struggle, that's what I feel like this party card is talking about. It's like a celebration of yourself, a celebration of everything that you've overcome, the obstacles that you have had to climb over, right? Hi. We have toil and labor. So you guys need to know that this leveling up is not going to come through you not doing anything, okay? And again, I've talked about this in every group. If you want change, you have to put in the effort. You have to make the executive decision to make that change. If you decide, hey, um, I don't wanna change anything. I just wanna sit back and chill. Um, is change possible? Yes, it is possible because I'm not the ruler of the universe and I don't get to decide what is and isn't possible. However, is change likely? No, it's not likely. It's possible, but it's not likely. So I think for you guys, what you need to hear is this change isn't going to come without you guys taking effort or without you guys taking action. Toil and labor. I'm slaving over something. I'm putting blood, sweat, and tears into something. I'm 
really putting in a whole lot of hard work and effort. Um, and again, this is not without challenges. I also see this as like getting in and getting your hands dirty. Maybe you guys are wanting to start a business and you have like a big vision for like what this business could be or what this new opportunity could be. And there could be more details or more work that goes into it than you think. So be aware of that, you guys. We have courtship. Someone could be trying to court you, group three. Someone could be trying to come in with an offer of love or an offer of some type of romantic feelings. That's really exciting. For those of you where that's not your focus, um, if this comes up, it's going to come up as a, like a surprise. I don't feel like it's necessarily going to be something where you're like, oh, really I really want this love or I really want a relationship it almost feels more so like your guys's focus is on your career and finding happiness in that and finding fulfillment in that also taking more risks I definitely feel like for a lot of you guys you're going to be wanting to travel more or you're going to be wanting to perhaps change up your environment in a way that's going to make you uncomfortable socially <sighs> I do feel like that is leading to that level up though um but yeah, courtship. I do see someone pursuing you that could even be like job offers coming in, you guys, or people wanting to work with you, people feeling uh, called to reach out and be like, hey, I'd really appreciate it. Some of you guys are like photographers or there's something with like a wedding. I don't know if you want to be a wedding planner, or if you want to be a wedding photographer. And I know that's really specific, but like when I was seeing the courtship, I was like, oh, like people are coming to you and they're like, I want you to uh, record my wedding, like be a vi videographer for my wedding or the photographer for my wedding. I'm seeing like something creative like that for some of you. <sighs> and again, it could be literally like a courtship. We have unexpected and it says unexpected people, events, messages, travel, or situations. Okay, group three, we love this. I'm excited. Yeah, I definitely feel like you guys are going to feel more called to explore, even like solo travel. For some of you, you could most definitely be traveling with friends or family, but I feel like some of you are feeling called to do some solo travel and I definitely feel like you guys should move forward with that. Um, with the unexpected people and events, again, that makes me feel like people are wanting to work with you. There could be someone special coming in and like wanting to court you, but it feels more like people are feeling drawn to your energy in a professional manner. You may be receiving unexpected messages as well, perhaps even unexpected offers. We have a fragile heart and it says you can be vulnerable and trust in this connection. Your fragile heart is safe. All right. So obviously if there is a love offer coming in, I feel like this is just asking you to be open, be open to receive that love. Also, you guys, if you are getting opportunities where you feel like, oh my God, I cannot believe this is happening, know that it's safe to accept those opportunities and know that you deserve it. For some of you, you have imposter syndrome and you don't feel like you are deserving of the offers that are going to be coming in for you. And you need to know that you are deserving of it or else those offers wouldn't be coming in, right? All right, and the last card I have for you guys, this is a shadow work card, so it is going to be a little bit rougher. It says resentful. Um, think loving thoughts uh, for the person or yourself that you resent. It's restricting your emotional happiness. Your thoughts create your reality. Group number freaking three. All right, your thoughts create your reality. That is what that's saying, period. All right, so the shadow work card you guys need to focus on is creating productive healthy thoughts and that's not to say you always have to be happy that's not to say you can't experience sadness or anger but in order to move forward in order to move in a positive direction you do have to change your thought process okay so i don't know if that's towards somebody else a situation or yourself but that's got to change so that is what i have for you guys group three let me know below if this resonated thank you guys so much i love you so much and i'll talk to you guys very very soon all right bye